hello everyone welcome to my channel in this video so let me inform you that we are starting a new lecture series on the cpc uh, so as you can see on the screen we are starting a lecture series on withdrawal of a suit and a compromise of a suit under cpc so this is the first lecture on the withdrawal and the compromise of a suit under cpc so this is the first lecture of the lecture series on the withdrawal and compromise of a suit so we'll be going about what is the meaning of the term withdrawal of a suit and a compromise of a suit under cpc what is the law that governs the withdrawal of a suit and a compromise of a suit and also the legal consequences and the procedure to be followed in the withdrawal and compromise of a suit under cpc so let's begin with the lecture as you can see on the screen order 23 of the cpc governs the withdrawal and compromise of a suit under CPC. This means that Order 23 of the CPC govern two kinds of suits. First is withdrawal of a suit and second is a compromise of a suit. So what is the meaning of the term withdrawal of a suit and compromise of a suit? So if we talk about the withdrawal of a suit, it means a suit in which plaintiff withdraws his suit filed against the defendant either partly or wholly is called withdrawal of a suit with respect to issue between them so when a plaintiff withdraws a suit against the defendant with respect to issue between them is called withdrawal of a suit under order 23 of the cpc and if we talk about the compromise of a suit compromise of a suit means that when a party is to suit that is plaintiff and defendant agrees to or compromise between them with respect to issue between them either wholly or partly in order to withdraw a suit against the defendant is called a compromise of a suit so in this there is a compromise or agreement between the plaintiff and the defendant to withdraw a suit against the defendant with respect to issue between them such kind of withdrawal is known as compromise of a suit so now we are aware that order 23 of the CPC talks about the withdrawal of a suit and a compromise of a suit. Order 23 of the CPC talks about withdrawal of a suit and a compromise of a suit that we already know it. Now if we talk about the withdrawal of a suit, order 23 of the CPC talks about two kind of withdrawals that is absolute withdrawal and second is qualified withdrawal. Now, what do you mean by absolute withdrawal? Absolute withdrawal means a withdrawal with the leave of the suit or without the permission of the court, which means that the plaintiff can withdraw his suit against the defendant without the permission of the court. Here, leave of the court means without the permission of the court. So basically, it means that if a suit has been filed against the defendant and if he wants to withdraw a case against the defendant, then plaintiff without taking permission of the court can withdraw the suit against the defendant this is known as absolute withdrawal the second type of withdrawal under order 23 of the cpc is the qualified withdrawal so what is qualified withdrawal qualified withdrawal is the withdrawal with the leave of the court or with the permission of the court which means that if a person wants to withdraw a suit against the defendant, he seeks the permission of the court, that is leave of the court first, and then he withdraws the suit against the defendant. Such kind of withdrawal with the permission of the court or the, with the leave of the court is known as qualified withdrawal. So these are the two kind of withdrawal under order 23 of the CPC that is absolute withdrawal and qualified withdrawal given however if we talk about the compromise of a suit that is under order 23 of the CPC there are no types of compromise there is only just one compromise that is when a parties uh, that is plaintiff and defendant compromise or agree to come to a conclusion between them with respect to the subject matter of issue between them such kind of compromise between plaintiff and the defendant under order 23 of the cpc is known as compromise of a suit 
Now you must be knowing the meaning of the term withdrawal of a suit and a compromise of a suit. Law governing the withdrawal of a suit and a compromise of a suit that is order 23. Types of withdrawal and types of withdrawal that is absolute withdrawal and qualified withdrawal. So this is all for this lecture. In the next video we will be learning about the absolute withdrawal of a suit under order 23. Welcome back to our channel. This is lecture number 2 on the withdrawal and compromise of a suit. Lecture series on the CPC. In lecture number 1, we learned about the meaning of the term withdrawal and a compromise of a suit, types of withdrawal and a compromise of a suit, and the law governing withdrawal and a compromise of a suit under order 23 of the CPC. In this present lecture number 2, we will be learning about the absolute withdrawal of a suit under order 23 of the CPC. However, before we proceed with this present lecture number 2, it is important for you to know order 23 is therefore important for you to revise the order 23 of the CPC. Order 23 of the CPC talks about two kinds of suits that is withdrawal of a suit and second is a compromise of a suit what is the meaning of the term we have discussed in the lecture number one so you can go through that lecture to know what actually withdrawal of a suit and a compromise of a suit actually means further order 23 of the cpc says that withdrawal of a suit can be of two types that is absolute withdrawal of a suit and qualified withdrawal of a suit so in this present video that is lecture number two we will be discussing about the absolute withdrawal of a suit only so let's start order 23 of the cpc talks about two kind of withdrawals that is absolute withdrawal and whether is qualified withdrawal which you are already aware of so in this present video we'll be talking about the absolute withdrawal that is withdrawal of a suit whether partly or wholly without the permission of the court that is where a party withdraws his suit from the court of law either wholly or partly against the defendant is known as absolute withdrawal this is the meaning of the term absolute withdrawal of a suit under order 23 of the cpc this means that a person that is plaintiff can withdraw his suit either wholly or partly without the permission of the court at any time as per order 23 rule 1 of the CPC against the defendant. This means that if a party that is plaintiff wants to withdraw a suit in that case he can do so without the permission of the court as it is his absolute and qualified right. What do you mean by the absolute and qualified right? Absolute and qualified right means that the court cannot compel the plaintiff to proceed with the case. That means that if a plaintiff wants to withdraw a case against defendant, in that case the court cannot say you cannot withdraw the suit against the defendant. That is, if a plaintiff wants to withdraw a case, the court is bound to allow him to withdraw a suit against the defendant. And if a plaintiff withdraws his suit without the permission of the court, either wholly or partly, in that case, after withdrawing a suit against a person that is defendant, he cannot be allowed to file a fresh suit against such defendant, against whom the suit has been withdrawn without the court's permission, because he is barred from filing a suit again after withdrawing a suit on the same subject matter or same issues. That is, after a plaintiff has withdrawn a suit against the defendant, he is barred by law from filing a suit against the defendant on the same issues or same subject matter. Bar of filing a fresh suit by the plaintiff after withdrawing a suit without the court's permission is based upon the legal maxim invicto beneficial non detur. That is, the law confers 
a man no right or a benefit which he does not desire so so this means that filing of filing a suit is based upon the legal maxim in which to benefit him not that which means that means that if a person wants to withdraw a suit then he should not be given a right to file on the same subject matter a suit which he does not desire so so if a person withdraws a suit without the court's permission then he is barred from filing a fresh suit against the defendant on the same subject matter or issue which he has already withdrawn a suit without the court permission also if a plaintiff withdraws a suit without the court's permission in that case the court has a power to cost a person withdrawing a suit without the court's permission in favor of defense means that ki if a person withdraws a suit without the court's permission in that case the court can award an amount or whatever the court deem fit in favor of person or certain amount of money to be paid to defendant by the plaintiff also one thing here it is to be noted that when a plaintiff withdraws a suit against the defendant without the court's permission in that case when a suit is withdrawn as per order 23 rule 1a of the cpc it gives the plaintiff a right that is defendant a right to file a fresh suit on the defendant where a suit is withdrawn by a plaintiff against him means that when a plaintiff withdraws a suit against the defendant in that case as per order 23 rule 1a the defendant can file a counter suit against the plaintiff against the same subject matter against the suit withdrawn against him and why it is done it is done to prevent the uh, defendant from harass the cause which the court deem fit so thereby gives the plant defendant to file a suit against the fresh suit against the plaintiff on the same subject matter when the suit is withdrawn against the defendant by the plaintiff under order 23 rule 1a of the cpc so this is all about the absolute withdrawal of a suit under cpc that is order 23 of the cpc in the next video we will be discussing about the qualified withdrawal welcome back to our channel this is lecture number 3 on cpc lecture series on withdrawal and a compromise of a suit under order 23 of the cpc in the previous lecture that is lecture number 2 we talked about the absolute withdrawal of a suit under cpc in this lecture number 3 we will be talking about the qualified withdrawal of a suit under cpc if you have not seen the lecture number 2 on the absolute withdrawal of a suit under this lecture series then the link has been given in the description i button and at the end of the video the playlist has been attached Before we proceed with the order 23 of the CPC, um, it is important for you to know the order 23 of the CPC. Basically, order 23 of the CPC talks about two kinds of suit. One is withdrawal of a suit and second is compromise of a suit. Furthermore, order 23 of the CPC talks about two kinds of suits. That is absolute withdrawal of a suit that we have discussed in the lecture number two and the qualified withdrawal of a suit which we are going to discuss in the present video however order 23 of the cpc talks about only one kind of suit on the subject matter of compromise however if we talk about the compromise of a suit there is only one type of comp suit that is compromise of a suit there are no different types of compromise under cpc under order 23 of the CPC. In this present lecture, we will be talking about the qualified withdrawal of a suit under order 23 of the CPC. Absolute withdrawal of a suit, suit under order 23 of the CPC has been already dealt under lecture number 2. So you can watch that. So let's start with the video. In this lecture number 3 on the CPC that is withdrawal and compromise of a suit. 
we'll be talking about the qualified withdrawal of a suit so what do you mean by qualified withdrawal of a suit so withdrawal of a suit with the leave of the court or with the permission of the court by a plaintiff against the defendant on a particular subject matter or a issue between them such withdrawal of a suit by a plaintiff against the defendant is known as qualified withdrawal the qualified withdrawal of a suit by plaintiff against the defendant is given under order 23 rule 13 of the cpc order 23 rule 13 of the cpc talks about as follows where court is satisfied the suit shall fail by reason of some formal defect or b that there are sufficient ground as following the plaintiff to institute a fresh suit for the subject matter of a suit or part of a claim it may and on such term as it think fit grant the plaintiff permission to withdraw from a suit or such part of claim with liberty to institute a fresh suit in respect to the subject matter of such suit or such part of the claim so as per order 23 of the rule 1 sub clause 3 of the cpc which talks about the qualified withdrawal of a suit apart from absolute withdrawal of suit so as per qualified withdrawal of a suit if a plaintiff withdraws a suit against the defendant with the leave of the court that is with permission of the court either wholly or partly with respect to the subject matter or the issue between the plaintiff and the defendant and plaintiff retaining the right to file a suit on the same subject matter or the issue between the plaintiff and defendant again such withdrawal is called qualified withdrawal under order 23 rule 1 sub clause 3 of cpc so the question that comes in our mind is that on what ground a person can withdraw his suit with the permission of the court so can you tell what would be the grounds for withdrawal of a suit with the permission of the court comment and let us know so a person may withdraw his suit with the permission of the court or with the leave of the court on the following ground against the defendant these are the two grounds that is formal defect or any other sufficient ground that a court deem fit where a plaintiff can withdraw a suit against the defendant with the permission of the court so if a plaintiff withdraws a suit with the leave of the court either wholly or partly here leave means permission against the defendant such withdrawal of suit is called qualified withdrawal of a suit on the grounds that is formal defect or any other sufficient ground which a court deem fit such withdrawal of a suit against the defendant is called a qualified withdrawal of a suit one more thing it is to be noted here is that when a plaintiff withdraws a suit against the defendant with the permission of the court on these grounds that is formal defect or any other sufficient ground it deem fit then the plaintiff may retain the right to file a suit again on the same issues or the subject matter against the defendant in a suit which he withdraws against the defendant with the permission of the court so the main difference between qualified withdrawal of a suit and absolute withdrawal of a suit and the benefit of qualified withdrawal of a suit is that a plaintiff can retain the right to file a fresh suit against the defendant on same issue or a subject matter against the defendant which means that in case of qualified withdrawal of a suit 
the plaintiff can file a suit that is fresh suit against the defendant on the same issue or the subject matter for which he has withdrawn a suit against the defendant but in case of absolute withdrawal of a suit the plaintiff cannot file a suit against the defendant because in absolute withdrawal of a suit he withdraws without the permission of the court but in case of qualified withdrawal of a suit where he withdraws the suit withdraw suit with the permission of the court the plaintiff can retain a right to file a suit against the defendant on same issue or a subject matter this is all for this video in the next video we'll be discussing about the grounds of withdrawal of a suit against the defendant by a plaintiff the leave of the permission in detail welcome back to our lecture series on cpc this is lecture number 4 and in this video we will be talking about some important concept on order 23 that is withdrawal and compromise of suit in the last lecture we talked about the qualified withdrawal of a suit under order 23 of the cpc the first important concept that we are going to talk about in this lecture is what would be the effect of withdrawal of a suit with the permission of the court before we start if you are new to this channel please like share and subscribe our channel the court may allow the defendant to withdraw the suit against the defendant to plaintiff either on the application made by the plaintiff to the court or suo moto by the court so when court allows the plaintiff to withdraw a suit against the defendant it can also pass the cost in it deem fit in favor of any party usually the court passes against the plaintiff that is plaintiff has to pay cost as part of award to defendant also when a court allows to withdraw a suit with the permission of it the court may allow the plaintiff to file a fresh suit again on the same ground by removing the res judicata doctrine this is the first important concept that is what would be the effect of withdrawal of a suit with the permission of the court the second important concept is that can minors withdraw a suit without the court permission under this concept the court in the interest of justice and after the amendment act of 1976 if a plaintiff is a minor that is a person acting on behalf of minor or next friend or a guardian in such case a minor cannot be allowed to withdraw a suit without the court permission as per order 23 rule 1 2 of the cpc so this means that when a plaintiff is a minor whether he is acting on his own or, or or through his next friend or a guardian the minor cannot withdraw a suit against the defendant without the court's permission as per order 23 rule 1 3 in the next video we will be continue the video on the concepts only till then like share and subscribe my channel back to our channel this is lecture number 4 on the cpc lecture series in this video we will be talking about the important concept on order 23 that is withdrawal and compromise of a suit continuing the lecture number 3 the important concept that we are going to learn in this video is that can a plaintiff be allowed to withdraw a suit on behalf of all the plaintiffs so when there is more than one plaintiff then in such case the suit cannot be allowed to withdraw either in a part or a whole without the consent of all the plaintiff a suit against the defendant however the court may allow to abandon the part of the share of a plaintiff who wishes to withdraw but not of others without their consent as per order 23 rule 15 of the cpc this is all about the withdrawal of a suit 
by one of the plant leaf when there are several plant leaf. The second important concept is that what is the limitation of withdrawing a suit. So as per order 23 rule 2, a plaintiff can be allowed to withdraw a suit against the defendant. At the same time, the plaintiff can be allowed to file a suit if a plaintiff withdraws with the permission of the court. However, it shall be subject to limitation as the law of limitation applies. But it is to be noted that when a plaintiff withdraws without the permission of the court, then a party is not allowed to file a fresh suit on the same ground against the defendant. This is all about the limitation under Order 23 of the CPC. In the next video, we will be continuing about some other important concepts under Order 23 of the CPC. Till then, like, share, and subscribe my channel. Welcome back. This is lecture number 4 on the CPC lecture series on order 23 of the CPC that is withdrawal and compromise of a suit. In this lecture number 4, we are going to talk about the important concepts continuing the last lecture. So the first concept that we are going to deal under lecture number 4 is the whether order 23 applies to other proceedings. So under this we are going to deal with the first proceedings that is appeal so first let us know what does the term appeal means appeal means applying to higher court higher court for the reversal of the decision by the lower court so appeal being the continuation of the suit order 23 of the cpc shall also apply to withdrawal of a suit which means that appeal is the continuation of a suit so therefore order 23 of the cpc will apply to withdrawal of a suit as a result appellate can withdraw a suit unconditionally after application has been made to the appellate court for withdrawal of a suit and the court that is appellate court cannot deny to withdraw a suit if a plaintiff makes an application to withdraw a suit the second proceeding that we are going to deal under this heading is the revision Order 23 of the CPC also applies to the revision proceeding because revision is part of the appellate jurisdiction of the High Court. However, it is to be noted that there are contrary views of the different High Courts among them whether Order 23 of the CPC shall apply to the revision or not because on one side there are certain High Courts we say that Order 23 of the CPC applies to the revision but on the other hand there are certain high courts which say that the order 23 of the CPC shall not apply to the revision proceeding. So there is a contrary view among the high courts whether order 23 of the CPC applies to the revision or not. The third type of executing proceeding that we are going to deal under this heading is the representative suit. So before we start this topic let us know what is representative suit. A representative suit is a suit that is filed by one or more person on behalf of themselves and the others having the same interest in a suit. The general rule is that all the person interested in a suit ought to be joined as a parties to the suit in a representative suit. So a suit filed by a person for his own interest and the interest of all other person on their behalf is called a representative suit. So if we talk about the representative suit, a person is not allowed to withdraw a suit either wholly or partly without the permission of the court which means that a person who files a representative suit cannot withdraw a suit without the permission of this court either wholly or partly. So to withdraw a representative suit, permission is a must of the court. The fourth type of suit that we are going to, to deal under this heading is the writ petitions. The fourth kind of proceeding that we are going to deal under this head is the writ petition. It is to be noted that under writ petition order 23 of the CPC shall also apply under article 226 and 32 of the constitution. Article 226 of the constitution of India gives the high court to issue writs and article 32 of the constitution gives the supreme court power to issue writs and so order 23 of the CPC shall apply to even a writ petition which means in a writ petition a person shall be allowed to withdraw a suit unconditionally 
it is to be noted that in a writ petition a person can be allowed by the high court and the supreme court to withdraw a suit unconditionally but he would be barred from filing a fresh suit on the same cause of action or the subject matter or the issue in case of writ petition before the high court and the supreme court so these are the four kinds of suits where order 23 of the cpc applies in the next video we'll continue with the important concept on the order 23 of the cpc till then like share and subscribe my channel welcome back to our channel this is lecture number seven on order 23 that is withdrawal and a compromise of a suit in this video unlike the previous lectures we are going to deal with the important concepts on order 23 of the cpc that deals with the withdrawal and a compromise of a suit first important concept that we are going to deal with under order 23 of the cpc is that consequences of withdrawal of a suit so can you guess what could be the consequences of a withdrawal of a suit by a plaintiff against the defendant so the consequences of withdrawal of a suit under order 23 of the cpc by a plaintiff is that when a suit is withdrawn by a plaintiff with or without the leave of the court that is with the permission of the court in that in that case it is a duty of the court that if any benefit has been given to plaintiff against the defendant by virtue of interim order in that case the court shall restore all the benefit given to plaintiff again to defendant so this is the main consequences of the withdrawal of a suit under order 23 of the cpc that is when a plaintiff has been given any benefit by the court by virtue of interim order in that case all the benefits are given back or transferred back to defendant when a plaintiff withdraws a suit against the defendant which means that defendant will get back all the benefits back again the second important concept that we are going to deal with under this order 23 of the cpc is that when a plaintiff when can a plaintiff file a fresh suit when a suit is withdrawn by him that is plaintiff so when a plaintiff withdraws a suit against the defendant under order 23 of the cpc in that case there are two conditions where a plaintiff can withdraw a suit against the defendant under order 23 of the cpc which will determine whether a plaintiff can file a fresh suit against the defendant again or not so let us deal with the first issue or the first circumstances so the first circumstances is that if the plaintiff withdraws the suit without the leave of the court that is without the permission of the court in that case plaintiff cannot file a fresh suit on the same cause of action or issue or subject matter against the defendant the second situation is that when a plaintiff withdraws the suit against the defendant with the permission of the court that is the plaintiff takes the permission of the court to withdraw a suit against the defendant in that case the court may allow to file a fresh suit on the same cause of action or issues or subject matter which means that if a plaintiff withdraws a suit under order 23 of the cpc against the defendant with the permission of the court in that case the court may allow the plaintiff to file a fresh suit on the same cause of action if he wants at the later stage against the defendant however this remedy is available to plaintiff only in the case when a plaintiff withdraws a suit against the defendant under order 23 of the cpc with the permission of the case but not however this remedy will not be available to plaintiff against the defendant if he withdraws the suit against the defendant under order 23 of the cpc without the permission of the court so now you must have got when a plaintiff can file a fresh suit or the same cause of action against the defendant if he withdraws the suit under order 23 of the cpc this is all about 
in this video in the next video we will be talking about more important concepts till then like share and subscribe my channel welcome back to my channel kaslo this is lecture number 7 on order 23 of the cpc which talks about withdrawal and a compromise of a sue in this lecture unlike the previous lecture number 6 we will be talking about the important concept so let's start the video before that if you are new to my channel please like share and subscribe my channel the first important concept that we are going to talk about in this present lecture is that can appeal lie against the withdrawal of a suit by the parties. मतलब कि क्या parties that is plaintiff appeal कर सकती है अगर वो withdraw कर लेती है उसका case against the defendant. इसका answer है no. मतलब कि अगर plaintiff withdraw कर लेता है उसका case against the defendant. In that case, the court will not allow to file an appeal in the higher court after withdrawing the suit against the defendant. The second important concept that we are going to talk about in this lecture is that can revision lie against the withdrawal of a suit by the parties. This means that if the parties that is plaintiff revision ke liye apply in the higher court if they have withdrawal of their case defendant ke against. So let's see what is the answer for this concept. As you can see on the screen, the order of the court allowing to withdraw a suit or not allowing to withdraw a suit is a case decided under section 155 of the CPC and so it is revisable. Matlab ki agar court allow kati hai withdraw a suit to plaintiff against the defendant ya fir plaintiff ko nahi allow kati hai to withdraw a suit against the defendant. To wo hai case decided under section 155 of the CPC or wo case decided hai इसलिए वो रिवाइजेबल है तो इसका मतलब सीधा ये हुआ कि प्लेंटिव रिवाइज के लिए हायर कोर्ट में अप्लाई कर सकता है अगर वो विट्रो करता है सूट अगेंस्ट द डिफेंडेंट दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द विट्रोवल ऑफ अ सूट अंडर ऑर्डर 23 ऑफ द सीपीसी एंड इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द कॉम्प्रोमाइज ऑफ अ सूट अंडर ऑर्डर 23 ऑफ द सीपीसी टिल देन लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल Welcome back to my channel Caslo. In this lecture, we will be talking about the compromise of a suit under order 23 of the CPC. So what do you mean by the term compromise? The term compromise means the settlement of parties after filing a suit in the court of law. So what procedure a parties has to follow in order to compromise a suit between them in the court of law is given under order 23 of the CPC. So, as per Order 23, Rule 3 of the CPC, a compromise of a suit between parties can be done in a two ways. One, by the parties by an agreement in writing and signed by them. The compromise can be made between them to come to the conclusion of a dispute between them. However, the court must satisfy with an agreement between the parties to the suit in order to end the dispute between them. Second, the compromise can also be done between the parties if defendant satisfies the plaintiff with respect to issue or subject matter between them either wholly or partly then also the court shall record the agreement between the plaintiff and the defendant and shall pass the degree of compromise accordingly. So these are two ways by which parties to suit can compromise a suit between them after a suit has been filed by a plaintiff against the defendant as per order 23 of the CPC. So as we already know what is the meaning of the term compromise. It means a settlement of a dispute between the parties with a mutual consent that is plaintiff and defendant in order to end a legal battle between them in the court of law. So the main question that comes in our mind is that what are the essential conditions that are required to be satisfied by the court in order to pass a compromise decree under order 23 of the CPC. 
So the essential condition required to pass a compromise decree under Order 23 of the CPC are 1. There must be an agreement or a compromise between the plaintiff and the defendant. 2. Such agreement between the parties that is plaintiff and defendant shall be in writing and signed by the parties that is both the parties. 3. It must be a lawful agreement between the plaintiff and the defendant. 4. It shall be recorded at the court of law. 5. The compromise decree must be have passed by the court of law. So these are the essential conditions that are required to be fulfilled before a compromise decree has been passed under order 23 of the CPC. So the next important question that comes in our mind is who shall record a compromise decree? A compromise decree shall be recorded by the court of law where the case are pending. That is if a suit is pending before a civil suit then it shall be recorded by the civil court. Similarly, it shall be done by the appellate court, revisional court or executive court and it is to be noted that the court has to take a compromise agreement between the parties as a genuine if the agreement between the parties that is plaintiff and the defendant is made with the consent of the parties that is both the parties after recording the same and passing of the consent decree. The next important question that comes in our mind is who shall challenge the compromise agreement? Any party to suit may challenge a compromise agreement on a ground that there was no compromise agreement or it was not made in writing or it was not signed by the parties or any other ground which the court deem fit reasonable. However, the court which has power to record a compromise agreement shall also decide the question with respect to compromise agreement when challenged by either party. So the next important question that comes before us is that does compromise suit under order 23 of the CPC apply to other proceedings or not? Order 23 of the CPC only applies to the civil suit. It doesn't apply to any other suits. Another question that is there before us is what does the term satisfaction of the court means under order 23 rule 3 of the CPC which deals with the compromise of a suit. The term satisfaction to court means that the court has to satisfy itself before accepting the compromise agreement between the parties and passing a compromise decree. Also the question is before us is that can minors enter into compromise decree. So as per order 23 of the CPC no minor can enter into agreement between the parties with respect to compromise under order 23 rule 3 of the CPC without the permission of the court which means permission of a court is a must in order to compromise with a minor. Similarly the next question that is there before us is that can a pleader enter into compromise? Answer to this question is yes. A pleader can enter into a compromise between the parties to suit except the government pleader who has to act on the order of the government which means a government pleader has to take the permission of the court before he enters into compromise with the parties. Similarly, can a representative suit be compromised is the question before us. As per order 23 rule 3b of the cpc no compromise can be made without the permission of the court if it is related to a representative suit so the next important concept that comes before us is that what is a difference between a compromise decree and res judicata it is to be noted that a compromise decree is not a res judicata because a compromise decree is something which is agreed upon by the parties not something which is decided by the court of law thus it is not a decision of a court here in the term compromise of a decree the court merely puts its seal on the agreement already made by the parties thus compromise of a decree does not operate as res judicata so the next important question that comes is how is compromise decree executed it is executed in the same manner as the order decree is executed.
the next important question that is there before us is can appeal be filed against a compromise order or a decree passed by the court of law answer to this question is that no appeal lies against the compromise order or a decree passed by the court because it is a mutual agreement between the parties to the suit to compromise a suit between them also the next question is that can there be a revision of the compromise decree before the court answer to this question is that the order of the court recording a compromise of a suit between the parties is a case decided under section 155 of the cpc thus high court can revise an order dealing with a compromise of a suit so this is all about the compromise of a suit under order 23 of the cpc if you like the video please like share and subscribe my channel